09 concepts. Use the scale icon. Okay, if you went through the trouble to make a nice plant and then you realize that you were zoomed in and it's minuscule and you need it to be larger, we can use the scale icon to make this bigger. So if we select it and then we press the scale icon, it asks for the specified base point. We'll click around the middle and we'll say we want it twice as big. We're going to type in a 2 and press enter and that will make it larger. So if we pressed a 3, if we typed a 3 enter, we, it would be 3 times bigger. If we want it to be half the size, we type in 0.5. So it's handy. Okay, create a spline. Here's the spline command right here and I click the first point and everywhere that I click it's dropping a little grip and I'm gonna press enter 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 to finish the spline usually we just use this for landscape and afterwards those grips can be moved around and edited these little end of the line and start of the line can be adjusted and I'll show you how. I don't know why we would do this but they can be. Click spline, get a basic spline in, press enter to finish. Then it says a specify start tangent. If I click right now right here then this little end point is gonna point towards my click. If I was to click up here it would point that away so I'll, I'll do it right here and that was the start tangent and now it's asking you specify the end tangent and it's the same thing if I click over here it's the end point just points towards that last click that's it create a donut you can go into the draw menu and go into donut inside diameter. Let's make it 12. Press enter. The outside di diameter is 3 feet. Let's keep that. So just press enter and you can make as many as you want. This diameter here is your 12 inches. This diameter from here to here is your 3 feet. You can also just type the word donut in. Alright, the stretch icon. Right now this room is 18 feet and I need it to be 20 feet but I don't want the doorway to move so what the stretch icon will do for me what it actually does is just move the endpoints of whatever you have put in a crossing box, box selection so I'm going to start the stretch command and it tells me right here select objects by to stretch by crossing window so that means that we have to click and go right to left I can't just do these two endpoints I have to do the endpoints at the top of the room here too so I click I'm finished selecting it's thinking maybe I want to select more things but I don't so I'm just gonna press enter base point doesn't matter where our base point is we're just showing it a direction we want to go two feet in this direction So 24 we type it in and press enter and now this room is 20 feet now stretch actually can shrink things as well so let's do that let's put it back to 18 feet go to the stretch icon and close the endpoints that are going to be adjusted and you click that second crossing box uh, points press enter to say I'm finished selecting base point this time we want to come this way 24 inches so enter and now we're back to the 18 feet here uh, it's really useful for just changing a doorway. Let's say that we needed this actually to be three feet to the left. Stretch can do that easily. Click stretch, make sure you get these two endpoints and these two endpoints in your selection. So I've just clicked. 
press enter. I say we want to move it this way, 36 inches, and there it's done. So that's handy. Format the point style. Right now, if I make a point, I have a point style on already, but by default, this is the point style. So if I make a point, it shows up as that little tiny dot. And in your running snap, you do have a node snap, which is a point or a node. And right now it's on. And if we want to see those points, even just temporarily, then we could set that and we will see those points easily. Now, we can put points in when we measure or divide an object. So let's do that. Let's say that I want to put a light sconce that goes on the wall. One here, and one here, and one here. So that's three lights and four divisions. So I'm going to divide this to help me locate those lights on here. I can type divide and press enter. I want to divide this line into four segments and it's done. It's as easy as that. Now I can put my lights on there. I wouldn't use this symbol really because any other points on my drawing show as that too and that's not a good thing. So I would just make my lights and snap them to these points and move them off the wall there though. Now take those off. Divide takes the line and divides it into equal segments, but maybe we need to to div we need to measure out some segments. That's when we would use measure. So this time let's go through the menu. So here is your divide and measure. This time let's go to this one. Select the object to measure. If I click on this half of the line, the left half, it's going to start to measure from this start point this way. If I click on this part of the line, it is going to put my points in starting to measure from this end point over here. So let's do this side first. Select ob to me object to measure, click here. I want it to be every 20 inches. Enter. And there it is. Each one of these, if I were to do a distance, is 20 inches. Now, the chances of this working out equally to 20 inches is not very great. This one here uh, would not be 20 inches. It's 1 foot 4, so 16 inches. So it divides it equally, and then there's always a little remainder. Let's just do it the other way this time. Let's do a measure from this side. This time, let's do uh, 24 inches. And there you can, ooh, that looked like it came out exact. So let's do that again. Measure this 20 inches. And there's my remainder this time on this side, which is the 16. Okay, that's measure and divide and a rev cloud. A revision cloud usually is put around a note just to draw attention to a note. And it's this icon here, revision cloud. You click a start point and you move in a circular kind of fashion and you come back near the start point and it will close automatically for you. So there's one done. Let's do another one. Now the arc length was one foot over here. Let's do A, enter, and change it to two feet, and press enter, and I'll do another one. You can see it's much bigger arc here. If we go back into RevCloud and type O for object, select this one, reverse the direction, yes, and that turns the arc inside out. So that's revision cloud. And let's do hatch. 
So it looks nice when you hatch your walls. So we'll do that right now. One thing I've learned about hatch is that if you're zoomed in and you want to do this whole wall, it may not work. Sometimes you need to see all your walls on your screen or it may not work properly. So I'm going to go into hatch. Uh, the type that I want is I can just hit this little three dot uh, box here and I want to be on the other predefined tab. We don't want to do these and we don't want to do these. We just use this solid right here. Say OK. We have to show it where the hatch is going to be so we're going to pick points here that bounces us out of the dialog box and back to our diagram says pick an internal point or blah blah blah. We're just going to pick an internal point by clicking inside these walls and from this point it rushes outwards and if you had a gap, if your line wasn't closed somewhere, the hatch wouldn't work. It's like there's a leak in it so the hatch can't uh, it can't stay in there. So this is good. We have dashed what we want so we can press enter that takes us, bounces us back to the dialog box. Now we can do a quick preview and it all looks good. So we could press escape to get back to the dialog box and then click OK or we could just right click to accept. So I'm going to right click and it's done. Now I'm going to take this hatch and put it on the hatch layer where it belongs right here and I'm going to send my hatch to the back because my lines weren't showing so now they're showing. Okay let's do one more hatch. Actually this hatch sh does, I have put it on that hatch layer. Okay let's do one more hatch here on this table just for fun. So we're going to come into the hatch. We're going to click on here. Let's pick the herringbone and say OK. Now by default the scale is usually at 1 and we're going to go and pick points. It's got this uh, selected. We'll enter and then you should always preview it. If that isn't the scale that you want, just press escape to return to the dialog box and change the scale. You know what? Let's put this just at 0.5 and preview. That makes it smaller. Escape. If I don't like that, I'm going to go to 2 and preview. That's too big. So you find what you want and then say OK and the hatch is done. I'm just going to get rid of that though for now and do lengthen. Okay, if I have a line and it's five feet long and I need it to be ten feet long, I can use, oh, it's on the modify, I can use this lengthen. I can use T for total. I want it to be a total of eight feet, let's say, and enter and change this object. And now if I did a distance, it would be exactly eight feet and it's one entity. I didn't add another line on which is really kind of garbagey drafting to just be adding pieces on and have lines be all sorts of different uh, entities. So that's lengthen and the last one I want to quickly show you is how to mirror something. So let's take these two chairs we want to mirror them over a horizontal line to land them over here. So we're going to come to mirror. We don't just pick any line. We want to pick the midpoint of this table and click any other place that shows we're on a horizontal axis. It looks like nothing's happened but down in the command line it says do you want to erase them? No by default so we'll press enter and there they land. Let's do this one. We want to mirror it. We, this time we want it to land over here so we need a vertical axis. So let's pick the midpoint of this table. You can tell when you have the right axis because it lands where you want it and so then you do your second click and press enter and voila it lands there. So that's it. Oh I know I'll show you this. This is a common one. Students make a little faucet here and uh, a hand
handle here and they want to know how to move this handle to be exactly the same distance away and that's using mirror and go to the midpoint of this and just hit enter and it's done.